As you see in the title, this is going to be my 2008 thoughts as far as within the movie industry, talking about movies in 2008. I'm going to give my top five best films of 2008, the top five worst films of 2008. Then I'm going to kind of go through films within the year that I did enjoy and think people should definitely check out, whether I thought they were good or bad, or obviously big major films that I think are worthy of discussing. Then obviously at the end of this video, after I get through all that, I'm going to kind of, you know, kind of, Look at some of the upcoming releases coming out in 2009 that are already intended to come out that year that I'm already looking forward to when they actually do come out in 2009. As far as my top five, which I'll get to first, and number one in this film is, I, is a film that just recently came out, and this was a movie I wasn't expecting to see um, by the end of this year. I was expecting not to see it until a little while, and that's the movie The Wrestler. Um, star Mickey Rourke, he plays the role of Randy Ram, and pretty much this role, this movie is pretty much uh, centered around a couple different uh, storylines as far as the way the movie goes. A um, couple different things going on in this movie, which his character Mickey Rourke, which is uh, he plays the uh, wrestler Randy the Ram Robinson. He's pretty much infatuated and kind of in in love with this uh, one stripper that is played by Mar Marissa Tomei. Then at another point, he has a uh, daughter that he, them two are pretty much. Um, estranged to each other pretty much not pretty much most of the life uh Mickey Rourke's character wasn't associated with her his daughter pretty much hates her then pretty much they kind of get things patched up kind of like that and this movie kind of has somewhat of a Sopranos s finish not to spoil too much of the movie but it ends in kind of one of those uh things where it goes black but it goes black in a good way where it kind of is one of those films where they do the film way the way the film ends ends in a way where you obviously know that um, obviously, Randy the Ram Robinson, the character, beats the Ayatollah, which is played by Ernest the Cat Miller. This is pretty much built up to a 20-year rematch. That's the whole premise of the match between those two. And Ring of Honor, my favorite uh, wrestling company, definitely got a lot of good coverage in here. Um, the name got mentioned several times within the movie. And then, obviously, the ending of the movie was pretty much centered around um, the match with... Uh, Randy the Ram Robinson versus the Ayatollah, and that was done in, um, at Ring of Honor back when they did their taping at the Double Feature show, and even though that show was pretty bad for Ring of Honor, definitely was worth it for the press that this movie is getting, and definitely getting a lot of good press. I haven't heard pretty much anyone say anything bad about this film, so definitely I would say this is definitely a must-see and definitely worth checking out easily, the best film of 2008. Now, the second film, which is probably a lot of people is going to be pissed off that I didn't put this at the number one position. That's The Dark Knight. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a great film, very good film. But this film, in, in my opinion, is one of those films that is highly overrated by a lot of people. A lot of people will classify this as being one of the best films of all time. Now, if you classify it as the best film of 2008, even though I don't agree with it, it's at least arguable. You can at least make the case that it's possibly the best film of 2008. Of all time, hell no. There's no chance it's the best film of all time. Does it stand up there with movies like The Untouchables, JFK by Oliver Stone, Oliver Stone's um, Plantoon, Godfather Part 1 and Part 2, Scarface, um, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, and a um, number of other movies that um, just can't think off the top of my head. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, and even though I wouldn't classify it as one, even though it's my personal favorite, I don't know how many people will classify it as one being one of the greatest films, but that is Back to the Future, the original one, and a number of other films I would put over The Dark Knight. It was a very good film, but it's highly overrated by a lot of people. Um, obviously, Heath, Heath Ledger's role as the Joker was obviously the uh, show stiller in the movie. His role as the Joker, he did an excellent job. Now, first early this year, before the film came out, and you heard a lot of hype over the Heath Ledger uh, portrayal that he did as the uh, Joker character, I was pretty much thinking that, all oh, people are just being sympathetic, and he's kind of getting the sympathetic uh, kind of vote to be you know, nominated or possibly get an Oscar for this role, which I think he's definitely deserving to get a role. I was thinking they were probably being sympathetic, but then after seeing the movie, I was totally uh, wrong and dispelled by that because he did an excellent job as the role of the Joker, and like I said, the second best film of 2008, just right behind The Wrestler, and it was kind of hard to decide which one of those two I would put as the top one. I thought at first maybe doing a tie, but I said, hey, the hell with that. Let me have a clear cut one and two. Then number three, which this is a film that Probably will get more press towards um, 
Oscar season, and by the time it does get released on DVD, and that's the film Frost Nixon. And this film is based around pretty much the interviews back in the 70s after the whole Watergate scandal with Richard Nixon and David Frost was pretty much a fledgling t uh, television um, host, talk show host, kind of on the lines, I guess, back then you kind of classified him as somewhat of a Howard Stern or Jerry Springer was, where he wasn't taken serious, and then when he people saw that he wanted to do these interviews with uh, uh, Richard Nixon, thought it was a complete joke, thought he was going to get you know completely um, destroyed in these interviews, which at first he did, obviously. Um, then he finally actually um, had Nixon crack on the final um, cut of the um, of the interviews they had with each other, and um, definitely, um, I hope they, I don't know if they are on DVD yet, but definitely I would like to see at some point, I don't know if they'll possibly maybe put it as an extra on the Frost Nixon DVD, but I definitely would love to see a DVD or something on the other, put out some DVD with the original um, television interviews with David Frost and Richard Nixon back from the 70s. I think that would be excellent, especially since it's one of those things still to this day is one of the most highly rated television um, shows or whatever you want to call it, that interview with Richard Nixon done by David Frost, probably still one of the highest rated um, um, television ratings of all times, even to this day. Then number four as a movie that, just like the previous Frost Nixon, this would be a movie that will get pretty much more press towards um, Oscar season. This is um, Milk starring Sean Penn. He plays the role of Harvey Milk, the first openly gay politician from um, California. He, um, Definitely got a lot of heat for being the first uh, gay politician. Obviously, he was the first elected gay politician. Obviously, there's probably several others before that. They were just, you know, closet homosexuals. And this movie is one of those movies that all of this is based on 30 years, over 30 years ago, but it still, you know, resides to today, obviously, with the whole Prop 8 thing and the, the whole Prop 8 thing and everything with uh, politicians clinging, clinging to a religion like the pieces of shit like Sean Hannity, Bill O'Reilly, Ann Coulter, any of those um, Republican propaganda bullshitters on the Fox, or what I should say, Fix News Network. And um, definitely, you know, I'm, I'm one of those people that believe in equal rights. I, you know, believe there's a God out there. I'm not one of the people that are either agnostic or at, um, atheist. I do believe there's a God, but I mean, come on, there's some stuff in the Bible that says, Okay, it's okay to stone people, but, you know, people look away from that, then look at the, you know, just main things, obviously, with the whole um, issue of homosexuality, which I don't think anyone should have a problem with. It's their business. People, If people want to be like that, just let them be like that. I'm one of those people that don't really care or have a problem with um, those people just wanting to be what they want to be. I mean, just let them do what they want to be. And obviously, another pe person I forgot to mention, the bullshitters, um, uh, Rush Limbaugh, that fucking idiot. Just had to throw that in there as well. Then the uh, fifth movie. Now, this movie is probably going to shock people that I'm putting this in the top five, but this is my top five films of the year. This is not what I'm saying. It should be the top five. This is, in my opinion, the top five. And this movie, in most people's eyes, shouldn't be in the top five, but I enjoyed it that much, and that's the animated film Kung Fu Panda um, with uh, Jack Black and Angelina Jolie. And a couple other stars had um, voice roles in this film. Definitely a very funny film, and it's one of those films on the lines of, um, that are kind of like, you know, the Ice Ages and those type movies where it's uh, pretty much targeted towards kids, but it's one of those movies that I would say pretty much any age group should like and enjoy. It's definitely a lot of um, laugh out loud moments and a lot of um, funny stuff in the movie. Then the um, next movie that I want to discuss, and this is pretty much now me going to discuss movies that I think are um, some of the worst movies of 2008, the top five, and, um, and coming in at number five is pretty much a lot of these are the spoof films, which those uh, used to be good. When they came out with, you know, Scary Movie 1 and 2, when the Waynes Brothers did those, and then, you know, even um, a lot of people would probably say it's a terrible movie, but I thought it was good, was not another team movie, and even though um, American Pie was not a spoof movie, they did have some senses of it where some Parts of it might have been, you know, spoofs of other stuff, you know, um, and other, other um, movies like the National Lampoons, those type of movies. They do a good job of the uh, spoof, spoof, spoof type movies. This year, I would say some of the worst movies are definitely the spoof movies, where I think pretty much most of the movies, other than one, 
or some type of movies that involve some type of, you know, spoofing of some other movies or series of movies. Coming in at number five, as far as being the one of the worst movies, is the remake of um, Prom Night, which this is a film that I didn't understand why they did a remake or needed to do a remake. I wasn't a fan of the original one starring Jamie Lee Curtis. Obviously, she got known from that film, but obviously got more known for her role in um, Halloween 1 and 2. Obviously, more people would uh, know her from that role. And then coming in at number 4 is first of the spoof movies, and that's um, Superhero Movie, just a complete terrible movie from start to finish. Nothing funny at all. Um, some part, there's maybe one or two funny jokes in it, but other than that, it's completely terrible. Third one is, um, I would say, Meet the Spartans, another spoof movie. This is spoofing three, the movie 300, and I think they did even a poorly good poorly job of trying to spoof it. They could actually, this actually could have been one, one of those spoofs that if they would have tried and not try to make it so corny and so cheesy where it wasn't even good, corny and cheesy, it was just terrible corny and cheesy. Um, then coming in at number two is yet again a, another spoof movie or some type of spoof movie and that's uh, Mike Myers movie The Love Guru which this is a easily one of Mike Myers worst material that he has put out to date. Then coming at number one, which probably is not going to shock anyone that has seen this movie or at least has checked this movie out, and that's um, Disaster Movie, which is completely, completely terrible. Easily the worst film of 2008 would probably will not shock that many people. And these top five films, I'll say, that are the worst films, they're not even films, I would say, that are even worth going out your way to check and just laugh at how funny they are. You know, where some movies are that bad, where it's funny how bad they are, that I don't even consider these to that level, it's just, what the fuck, why am I watching this, this is completely trash material. But then, now let me get to movies of 2008, other than the top five, and obviously the top five worst and top five best movies, I want to get into other movies of 2008 that I did enjoy, and another one is um, a movie starring the late Isaac Hayes and the late Bernie Mac, the movie Soul Men. And this movie was good. It was one of those movies that was very disturbing in some parts, since obviously you found out that... Uh, uh, Bernie Mac did have a lot of health problems going into this, uh, going into the taping of this, and have had over the se past several years before his passing this year. And during this movie, there's some parts where it was kind of disturbing, like parts he said, "Hey, my heart's going." And pretty much even the most disturbing part was pretty much Isaac Hayes and Bernie Mac. They're playing roles, uh, pretty much where they were play playing older guys that were pretty much on their last days in their lives, and pretty much want to just live it, live it to the fullest, which both of them did do. Fortunately, both of them died uh, too, too, too younger than what they should have, especially Bernie Mac out of the two. Uh, Bernie Mac was definitely one of the top comedians. And good film, but it does have those disturbing parts in there where it's kind of um, very eerie of how, how uh, disturbing some parts of it are, considering you know if you know the issues of Bernie Mac's uh, health problems and everything in the movie, some of the parts are very, very disturbing, I would say. Then another film, which this film is going to be one of those movies where you're either going to like it or you're going to hate it. Um, I did enjoy it. I wouldn't say it's an excellent film or a must-see, but I thought it was pretty good. And that's the uh, movie Righteous Kill starring Al Pacino and Robert De Niro. And 50 Cent had a role in this film as well. Not a fan of 50 Cent, but he didn't have a role in this film that I would say hurt this. And hey, the other, film, other part of this movie I liked was um, Papoose popped in as a little... Uh, a, guest part in the movie playing a rapper just uh, rapping a little freestyle which was pretty cool seeing him in a movie since you know he hasn't even dropped an album which hopefully he does at some point in 2009 like I said it's going to be one of those movies you're either going to like or you're not I did enjoy but I know some people that probably you're not going to say was that good of a movie next one is a movie where it's one of those movie series that they're just you know pretty much um, doing it to death, and that's the Saw 5. Saw 5, the Saw series. Um, this was not a terrible film, but it was not It was the worst of the Saw films. This was the one Saw film that I would go out of watching it saying, that was not good, that's not a movie I would recommend people see, whether as the other four Saw movies I thought were very good material, and pretty much, I would say, at least in my opinion, all of them had at least good different portions of it. This just seemed like it was pretty, pretty much... Um, backtracking and pretty much, you know, just doing the series to death, which is expected, you know, when you got a series this day, like, this is like this version of this uh, generation slasher film, like the Friday 13th, the Halloweens, and the Nightmare on Elm Street, where you expect it, at some point it's going to be driven to death. I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, 
be shocked to see this go up to uh, number 10. They maybe take a little break, then finally, maybe years later, they'll come out with uh, finally another good maybe remake or other one, because that's probably the way it's going to go. These are going to beat this series to death where it's not going to be even good, because um, obviously they're coming out with the number 6 coming in probably October of 2009. Then the um, next film is... Um, one of those, uh, another animated films, and that's uh, Wally, which this film is one of those films that I didn't like as far as much as far as the Disney Pixar films. Probably one of those that I didn't enjoy that much. It had some good stuff in it, but it wasn't a movie that I enjoyed. I felt this was more of the animated film that I would say is more directed towards kids than one of those that could be um, targeted to pretty much any age group and any age group like it. Whereas the next one is Madagascar. I don't think I've covered that yet. And um, definitely Madagascar, I would say, other than Kung Fu Panda, was definitely the second best animated film of 2008 that I did enjoy. Then um, another film I want to discuss is uh, Will Ferrell's and John C. Riley's Step Brothers. Now, this was a good film. Now, if you're a fan of John C. Riley or um, Will Ferrell, you definitely would enjoy this movie. But I've come to know that a lot of people either like Will Ferrell, I hate him. Pretty much a lot of my friends that I know aren't fans of Will Ferrell, completely despise Will Ferrell, and don't think he's funny at all for some reason or another. I think he's funny. I, I don't think I'm the only one thinks him, that he's funny. And Step Brothers, I can say as far as a non-animated film, as far as comedy, definitely was probably, in my opinion, the comedy of the year, probably that or Soul Men, which both of them were very good as well. Um, then the um, next one is uh, Pineapple Express. Now going into this, mo this movie had a lot of hype around. This was another one of those Seth Rogen films that um, definitely he's um, garnered a lot of fame, obviously, um, with his stuff. And um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which was another film on the lines of Pineapple Express, where both of them, I would say, are solid material, solid movies, but not excellent material, which you were probably going into expecting. It was pretty much more, I guess, more the lines of kind of more of a serious comedy than a couple punchlines and jokes, whether as it should have been, you know, more of a movie that was just for the punchlines, just for the jokes, and less for kind of the serious type of part in the movie. Then the um, next movie is a um, another horror film like Saw 5, and that's The Strangers. And I would say as far as horror films, as far as this or Saw 5, The Strangers was the better of the two in the Better of the two that I would actually recommend people to go out their way to see is The Strangers. Definitely a pretty solid movie. Uh, not an excellent horror film. I don't think you saw any excellent horror films this year. It's also pretty solid ones, nothing great. Strangers is probably the best one I could say that I would recommend out of any of them. Then um, the next one is um, a movie that definitely um, I was a lot of people were going into hyping. This is probably one of the better of the success, successful movies of the years as far as being a big blockbuster hit. And that was Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And obviously this wasn't as good as the Temple of Doom or the Raiders of the Lost Ark or the other one they came out with. But still, uh, back in the day, but for um, Harrison Ford in this role for Indiana Jones and reprising the role, he did a very, very good job of playing um, Indiana Jones this many years later. And um, speaking of another film that got uh, reprised the role of is John Rambo, J Rambo 4 by... Uh, Sylvester Stallone definitely didn't expect going into this that that was going to be very good. Definitely a very good film from Sylvester Stallone. I thought he and Harrison Ford, due to their age and how long it's been since they did a last of those type of movies, playing either you know Sylvester Stallone's role as John Rambo or um, Harrison Ford's role as Indiana Jones, didn't expect them to do a very good job at it, but both of them definitely um, surprised me and shocked me at how good both of them did do with it. Then next to uh, two comic book films, other than the, um, actually not two comic book films, actually three comic book films. And this is obviously, um, all the comic book films are some of those films that, like the uh, Pixar films, like the animated films, and those type of films are probably the most um, successful films of the year. Um, the first one I want to discuss is Iron Man. Iron Man, I thought was a very good movie. Obviously, as far as comic book movies, you, even though I did say, um, Dark Knight's overrated. I did like The Dark Knight. I thought it was great. Don't get me wrong. I did enjoy the movie. I just think some people act like nuts over that movie. Next one is Incredible Hulk, which definitely was a huge, huge step up from the lackluster Hulk film that was done either back in 2003 or 2004 that was completely terrible. They, they actually did a good job of doing the Hulk movie and this one a whole lot. Then Hellboy 2. Hellboy 2, I wasn't a fan of the first one, so 
I did give this one a chance, but for some reason or another, I didn't like the movie that much. Some people might have liked it a whole lot more than what I did. Then um, some other films I want to discuss is 88 Minutes starring um, Al Pacino. Definitely this is going to be a film kind of on the lines of Righteous Kill, whether you know, like it or you're not. I did find it enjoyable, and Al Pacino is one of my favorite actors, so that probably helps me helps the movie, in my opinion, since I do like him so much. And I thought it was a pretty solid film. It wasn't an excellent film. It was pretty good. Another film that was pretty good this year was the movie Untraceable, which this film was based around the story, the story of the movie was, or the premise of the movie was, that there was a, a serial killer or some killer going around stalking people and abducting them and killing them live on webcam on an internet feed, which um, definitely is something scary to think of because in this day and age in technology, it will not shock me if someone goes the routes of doing something like that within the next five to ten years. Hopefully it won't happen, but this day and age in technology and some of the crazy motherfuckers that are out there in this world, it will not shock me if something like that happens. Hopefully I'm wrong, but hopefully this movie doesn't do something where it tries to get trigger some of those people to want to do that. Golden Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay. Now this is a film where it's one of those type of cheesy comedies, but I found it very enjoyable. I like the first Harold and Kumar film. If you like that one, definitely would recommend checking out number two. Um, there's some people that I know that like number two over number one. I prefer number one over two, but nonetheless, two was very good. Definitely would recommend it. Another film is um, Angelina Jolie's film, Want It. Now, um, that's the last of the films of 2008 that I would recommend you going out the way. Other one, actually, that I forgot to mention is um, HBO Films film that was uh, done earlier this year, which, the, which was the movie Recount. This was a movie based on the uh, recount of the uh, 2000, 2000 election between George Bush and Al Gore, and we all know the way that went, unfortunately. Um, then um, that was a very good film. Now, those are the movies of 2008 that I would recommend. I'll say went through all my top five best and top five worst. Now let me end this kind of giving out some movies in 2009 that are already looking out to be very good or movies that are definitely deserved to already hype up already. First one probably already on a lot of people's list is the movie Watchmen. Looks like it's definitely going to be good. Next one is another comic book uh, uh, movie, which is X-Men Origins Wolverine. The uh, next one is uh, a film. Um, it's a prequel to um, The Da Vinci Code. It's directed by Ron Howard, Angels and Demons. Definitely a film I'm definitely um, really looking forward to a lot. Next one is obviously a new Transformers. That should be pretty good. Um, a remake of Friday the 13th, which looks from the trailer doesn't look like it's going to be good. Hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully it does deliver. I don't think it's going to deliver onto the level that Rob Zombie did with the Halloween remake. Um, but hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully they, they do deliver in a good film there. Another one is 2012, which should be pretty good. Another one is a new Underworld film, which uh, some people might not like it, like that uh, Kate Beckinsale is not in this one. But nonetheless, it still looks like it's going to be a very, very good film. And definitely a fan of vampire movies, you sh should definitely like this. And it's not the typical vampire movie, I would say. Next one is Ice Age 3, definitely for animated films. And those type of films, if you're a fan of those, definitely is a film that I'm definitely highly much looking forward to the release of that film. Another one is Final Destination 4. They are finally coming out with a new one. Hopefully this one's going to be good. Number 3 I thought was pretty solid, but it wasn't obviously nearly nowhere as good as number 1 and 2, which pretty much that's the way those that series has been. 1 was very good. Number 2 was a little step down. Number 3 was even more of a step down. Hopefully 4, four kind of helps the series out and hopefully puts out something very good. Another Rambo is going to come out next year, which if it's anything like Rambo 4, should be a very good film. Um, other one is um, the uh, movie based on Notorious B.I.G. called Notorious, which just from the trailer looks like it's going to be an excellent film. And definitely for hip-hop fans, it's definitely a film that I know a lot, probably me and a lot of other hip-hop fans are definitely highly in anticipating the date and the release of this movie. Notorious, definitely looking forward to it a lot. Then um, next one is uh, if you're a fan of the uh, Medea movies, whether it's the plays or the actual um, blockbuster movies, this one is... Uh, um, Medea Goes to Jail definitely looks like it's going to be pretty good. And uh, next one is a new Terminator movie, which hopefully is going to be good. Haven't been checking out the Ter I haven't checked out the Terminator series that they're doing on um, Ter Terminator Sarah, Chron Sarah Chronicle uh, Chronicles on the uh, Fox uh, on Fox because I really haven't seen anything in it that I would recommend watching it or anything that I thought that looked good on it. Another one that I'm looking forward to is. Uh, 
Jim Carrey, he's going to be, uh, I guess they're going to be making another A Christmas Carol, which definitely his, him, his role in there should probably make it very good. Um, another one is uh, obviously Saw 6. Hopefully it's better than Saw 5. Um, at least hopefully um, they try to rebound from that um, lackluster movie that was known as Saw 5. Another one is a remake of Hellraiser. Then the final two, these are two questionable, questionable movies, which possibly could have come out in 2008, or at least are rumored to maybe come out in 2008. And these two films are two uh, video game-inspired movies, the first one being Metal Gear Solid, based on the Metal Gear Solid video games, which definitely should be very good. I'm not a fan of the Metal Gear Solid video games that much, but as far as the storyline, I know that the storyline of the game and everything could make it into a very good and enjoyable film. Another one is the Halo movie, which this one has been rumored for several years. Hopefully it finally comes out. If it does, I know it should be very good. Um, I know a lot of people probably say, oh, it's just probably going to be like a Star Tri Starship Troopers, just a little better production value and probably a little higher budget, obviously. Hopefully, but hopefully it will deliver at least a good film. So that's my thoughts of movies in 2008. Very successful year for the uh, movie industry in 2008. A lot of great films um, from 2008, especially the top five I named. Only ones that were bad were real, real bad or classified as unwatchable. As far as major movies, I know there's a lot of B movies that are probably even worse than those. But as far as major movies, those are probably the worst of the major films that came out in 2008. So just wanted to get my thoughts on the movie industry of 2008 as far as my favorite movies of 2008, worst ones, and obviously just giving my thoughts out on other movies in 2008 that I wanted to cover, and obviously looking forward to 2009, some of the movies that are already listed to possibly come out in 2009, and that's it. Peace.